Hey, hey guys. guys, it's Amber Schneider and Casey Weir, and we're going to teach you about Cytoxone Felis. So what is Cytoxone Felis? It's a protozoan disease that affects domesticated house cats and usually results in their death. Now this disease is carried in bobcats and is transmitted through tick bites, specifically Lone Star Tick and American Dog Tick. So why is this relevant to you, you may ask? Basically, this is relevant to you because the ticks that carry and transfer this disease are in your area, which is our area. Um, if you look at the picture on this slide, it basically shows you the tick presence by species. And if you notice, the darkest red area has Florida included. So this is very relevant to you and, more importantly, your cat. The red is where the cytoxone is found. Okay, so here we have the two offending ticks, Lone Star and American Dog. Okay, if you find these guys, you're going to want to grasp them with tweezers and slowly pull them from the skin. Um, don't want to crush them because this can release dangerous fluids which can cause further infection and harm to you or your pets. Uh, it's important to remove all the mouth parts and when you get the affected area clean of all pieces of tick you want to wash it, disinfect it, and then later on maybe even call a medical professional for your cat, vet, or for yourself, doctor. So the signs of infection are high fever, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing, depression, dehydration, anemia, jaundice, lameness, and last but not least, death. Okay, so you definitely want to prevent the treatment for this. It's not 100%. You don't want to have that be your last resort to save your furry friend. So here, one of the, one of the ways to prevent is a flea and tick collar. You just put it on like a normal collar. Um, it doesn't leave a residue, and it's unscented. The only thing is it could cause allergies. Um, but otherwise, it's awesome for killing ticks up to three months, though you don't want to use it on any animal below 12 weeks of age. So another popular prevention method that a lot of people use, and maybe you guys have even used, is to put a liquid ointment on their fur. Um, it does come off if you touch it. Um, if you get it on your hands, you definitely want to wash your hands after you've applied it to your cat. It can smell. It does last for about one month. Some important key things that you want to pay attention to with using this type of prevention is that you don't want to bathe your cat for 24 hours after application, and you don't want to allow your cats to groom themselves because they're basically will be licking off the solution and you want that to be on their skin so you want them to not groom themselves until the solution is dry. Also with Florida and it being foresty and bushy and lots of grass you want to do a yard treatment if you can help it. Um, this one specifically it kills ticks and other pests which is pretty cool. Um, it attaches to your hose so you basically just water your yard like normal it lasts up to six weeks. The only thing is you don't want to let pets or children on your yard until the spray has dried. And this can be toxic, so please use it as directed. So another really cool method that you can actually use is for inside your home. Uh, it's kind of cool because it lasts for a really long time, up to about 210 days. And it's basically a two-in-one because it also eliminates pet odor, which I'm sure everyone loves. Um, so you want to make sure before you use it that you're going to remove all animals, people, children from the area and wait until the spray is dried before anyone else goes back in. And before you actually use it, you want to make sure it's clean in general. So you want to vacuum or mop. And when you're spraying it, don't soak the area. And last but not least, if you need to, you can definitely use it multiple times as directed. Okay, so here we have a diagram of the life cycle of Cytoxone Felis. So you have your bobcat, which isn't affected. Then you have the tick that's going to go ahead and suck the blood from the bobcat, holding the cytox and this is its development and then you have your domesticated house cat the eruption of cells in the body 
from the actual disease and then the poor sick little kitty. So this is basically just a simplified version of what we just showed you, the life cycle of cytoxone. So it starts with the bobcat, who's the host. Um, he's infected but not showing signs of sickness. From there, the tick sucks the blood of the bobcat and ingests the infected blood cells of that bobcat. Then the ingested parasite multiplies in the tick during digestion and it migrates to the salivary glands. Then the tick bites your house cat, which transfers the parasite through its salivary glands to the inside of the cat. So from there, the spore-like eggs of the parasite infect the white blood cells of the cat and they multiply. From there, the red blood cells are infected and ultimately destroyed. As the infection spreads, it causes anemia and leads to multi-organ failure, then usually death. Currently, there is a new treatment available that has cleared a few patients and is currently the treatment of choice. But it's definitely not 100% and it doesn't very, it does not have a high rate of actually working. Um, but if your cat does survive, they become a carrier which enables the spread of cytoxone felis through the same cycle. Okay, so let's see what you remember, guys. So, number one, what type of disease is cytoxone phyllis? A, airborne, B, protozoan, C, viral, or D, zoonotic? B, protozoan. What ticks carry the disease? A, brown dog tick and black-legged tick. B, cat flea and brown dog tick. C, lone star tick and American dog tick. Or D, lone star tick and feline lice. C, lone star tick and American dog tick. So which native wildcat is a reservoir carrier? A. Bobcat B. Tiger C. Mountain Lion or D. Cheetah A. Bobcat What cells are destroyed? A. Skin cells B. Muscle cells C. Bone cells or D. Blood cells D. Blood cells What are ways to prevent? A. Tick collar B. Topical ointment C, never let your animal outside, or D, A, and B? D, both A and B. We all know never letting our animal outside is a little ridiculous. <laughs> what signs of infection does not belong? A, lameness, B, high fever, C, skin blisters, or D, depression? C, skin blisters. Uh, so that's all for our presentation, guys. Thanks, Thanks so for much listening. For listening.